Hello YouTubers, welcome to vlog number 114 2 times 14 plus 100 Quick maths Today isn't too intensive a day There are a few pieces in the last few days And it's very windy Excellent So today isn't too intensive a day We've got a couple of just steady state sessions And weights Oh yeah Excellent And with the tanks as well managed to talk to the tank company and should actually get them next week thought I could get them this week but some delays and some payments and everything so the tank company they're coming next week so hopefully get them out to you maybe Thursday next week but we'll see how that all goes exciting times yeah buddy but time to get down to the club nice and safe let's get to it and we've made it to the club Unfortunately, the weather has taken a turn, which isn't so fun, but we're in eight, so it shouldn't affect us too much. But it seems to be quite windy, and the water can get quite bad quite quickly, especially as it seems wind against stream. Oh, no. But again, it's an opportunity to do something. What is the opportunity? To improve bad water rowing because who knows what Henley could throw up during the regatta. Oh yeah. Okay, let's head into the club, get changed, and see what the first session is. And before we get into the club itself, look at this behind me. So I've walked in here. This has only taken them maybe a few days, less than a few days. Massive marquee all the way down here getting ready for the Henley Raw Regatta. Okay, now let's go get changed. And we've made it into the crew room after a fantastic session and a wonderful paddle. As you saw in the footage, Bass was in fact moved from stroke seat to two seat. It's a common theme with me, common trend. See the bow, two or bow, uh, stroke, two or bow. <laughs> Has it anything to do with the uh, ejector crap from the other day? No, it's probably a lot to do with that, yeah, yeah. The gentleman's pair. How was it <laughs> with Bass and two seat? Oh, with Bass? Yeah. Smooth, smooth, that's it. Very smooth. smooth like that. And we have now received the breakfast. I have mushed up, made my own scrambled eggs and beans. Yeah, buddy, because remember, food is fuel, and you need to fuel up that recovery to yam on it in the eight. Especially when you've got Jack stroking. Got the keys to a tasty V8 now. I'm pretty happy about it. It's going well. Oh, yeah. And now Vass is about to beat him up, isn't that right, Vass? <laughs> <laughs> yes! Vass is very eloquent, I swear. All right, we're gonna eat this, chill with the lads, and possibly a tour of the Henley Royal Regatta enclosure. Or the, what is it? The competitive enclosure. The boat tents. The boat tents, and perhaps enclosure. And Fraser has taken an interesting tour into his diet today. <laughs> All right, so eat this, recover, next session. See you after.
<laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll Describe, forward. Fraser, what's happening? <laughs> what are they doing? Know. What are they doing? They, uh, Moving further, further it's back. Two, two Oxford students trying so to did, move one foot plate. So were they only supposed to do one seat and they've done the wrong seat? Is that what it is? I think they went the wrong way. The wrong, so they added instead of taking away. What did you learn at Oxford, boys? Engineers, I... We moved the feet. <laughs> okay and welcome to Erg Thoughts with Cam Buchan Hope you're enjoying the different angle today on the head rather than on the boat itself Got some new mounts in the mail and now it's time to try them out Today it's not just myself on Erg Thoughts we have a couple of lads from Oxford University rowing in the eight. We've got Will Geffen and Vasilius Raguliucho. Close. Very close, yeah, that was good. Um, it's actually with a few more S's. It's just ragu sauce. Ra it's ragu it. sauce. Ragu sauce works fan fantastically, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as you can tell from the title, today's Erg Thoughts is about rowing at Oxford and what it's like. So just a couple of questions for the lads and see what they, what the experience of rowing at Oxford University is like. The, some of the top tier universities, especially for rowing and even just educationally very up there in their whole rankings. Okay, let's start with Will. <laughs> Your favorite experience rowing for Oxford. Oh, uh, it definitely has to be winning the 2015 boat race. That was exceptional. Uh, that was a great, great crew, great time, a great win. Um, I'll never forget it. Probably one of the highlights of my life. Wow. What about you, Vasilius? Uh, for me, it's got to be um, 2017 boat race where, yeah, we had a really tough race. Um, I think Will and I had similar, similar kind of speed in terms of our our crews were both like one of the top eights of, of all time. Um, and uh, yeah, really, really good crew, strong. And Cambridge gave us a really good fight the whole way down the course. And, you know, huge credit to those guys. Um, also, one of my other favorite memories is just getting all the boys and park ends and just absolutely <laughs> vibing it. Um, just which, getting the boys around in the circle. Yeah, getting the, <laughs> getting the hype circle going and just, you know, having, having a jolly good time. Oh, a jolly good time! Jo a jolly yes, time. I do declare, yes. Yeah, a good time, Vinny's. Oh. Yeah, well, good, you know, I'll... and Vinny's. Love Vinny's. <laughs> Big up to my Vin Vinny's uh, homies. Yeah, and what? Yeah. Um, yeah. What is your favourite dish for breakfast? Um, At Oxford. What was your daily Oxford breakfast? So, uh, 2017 it was oatmeal with either honey or Nutella, because I like chocolate. Um, and this year it was peanut butter and, and jam and on bread. So I think um, if you want to go fast, probably do the uh, oatmeal with honey. Because remember, food is fuel. Will, how about you? Breakfast, um, not my favorite, but the most effective breakfast was like black coffee and plain oats. It's pretty boring. Is that but, together? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, mixed. <laughs> Um, black holes. Well, it gets, yeah, holes. I mean, if you're getting up at 6 and you've got to be on the erg at 6.30, you just need something quick that will perk you up. Um, but certainly this year I've been quite lucky. I got to go do the late group, live a sort of more graduate lifestyle, and then I got to have a bit more breakfast. Uh, porridge with like blueberries and yogurt on it. Ooh. Always a good one. Goes yeah. out, so so antioxidants. A question for both of you. The day in the life of an Oxford athlete student athlete i think it depends i think it depends if you're in, if you what your academic schedule is like if you're a very busy undergrad you have to be in the real early er uh, group you're there at 6 30 starting a you know a 90 minute session you finish at eight get off to lectures at nine then you got lectures through from nine to eleven then you sort of have a tutorial maybe until lunch grab a real quick lunch because you've got to be on the bus at one then one till five, you've perhaps even later if it's a Cavisham, you're training on the water. Uh, and then you get back, cram some work, and get some sleep. 
it can get pretty bleak. <laughs> yeah, it, it grinds you down. Um, it's fine for a couple of weeks, and then you know all you want to do is go home and relax, and you can't because you got to, you know, do something for your supervisor, or you got to go do some research. Uh, for me, I'm in the lab, um, and Will just finished his masters uh, after doing his undergrad in chemistry, and um, yeah, I'm still going. Technically, I'm trying to transfer from a masters to a PhD. So I may well be uh, at Oxford for another two years. Plenty of work to do. Plenty of work to do. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely can get quite monotonous and um, you know tiring after a while. But I think yeah. I think the problem is when people talk about the boat race in Oxford and Cambridge and their training. Yeah, we have a heavy academic schedule, but I'm sure most universities have a similar uh, similar schedule. And I, I certainly know even people who row. Well, you know, juggling a job, that's really impressive as well. I think there's a lot of sort of attention to, oh yeah, these Oxford and Cambridge boys and girls do uh, this crazy schedule. But I think all rowing, unfortunately, at a high level requires that kind of commitment. And if you're doing something else like studying or working, you're just going to be very, very busy. Absolutely. So it is very monot can be monotonous can be can be a struggle sometimes yeah so it, yeah the problem with the season and is that it is all over in march maybe early april so you don't get those sort of fun summer months you've really got to grind it out in the winter otherwise you're gonna lose yeah yeah it's like you know you wake you wake up and it's dark you go to the ergs and and it's still dark and then you, you're cycling back home and it's you know pouring it down with rain so you're completely soaked and you've got to go to the lab and then you cycle back out to the bus and it's raining and you know those are the really bleak moments and i think those are the ones that kind of grind you down and if you can fight through those mentally then usually the season goes quite well and actually a biggest part is like keeping injury and illness free and if your season and your team you know minimizes those kind of um let's put it like disadvantages or, or negatives then you're probably going to do quite well but you get some weird moments like you know if you're cycling for the 5 30 a.m bus to london you pass your mates still out from the night before you know it feels very weird <laughs> uh, it's just a very different life um and it does yeah it does take away i think a bit from the the sort of uni experience um, so it's you've got to you've got to make these sacrifices but that's that's Same life isn't it? exactly and if you were a young will or a young vass and you wanted to give yourself some tips for going to Oxford, what would they be? Talk to Sean. Sean Sean loves talking to potential recruits and people who are thinking about going to Oxford. One of the best things I did when I got my place was just email him saying I was coming and he straight away gave me a bunch of tips and you know a, a training program and got me involved. Well, that's after you get into Oxford. That's after you get into Oxford. The question was before. Before you get in, you need nail, nail those academics first. You need a good resume. Yeah. Get a good CV. Get a good CV. Go and work in Vassar's lab. He needs a bit of help. I would love some help if he you want to intern. <laughs> um, do a bit of pipetting. Some you know, work. perhaps some moral support. Yeah. Maybe a, you know the odd hug here and there. The odd coffee run, maybe. Yeah. No, honestly, I think. Um, you know, obviously good grades are just the standard, but you know, do something that's gonna separate you from the you know majority, whether it's get an internship. I spent um, all three of my undergrad summers doing internships instead of, you know, rowing, and that really helped me get into Oxford basically. So, you know, go do something that most people don't do, have a good story, make a good story, have a good resume, you know, and apply and you know, hopefully those things stand out. But if you don't have those it's very very hard yeah. to get into Oxford. You absolutely cannot rely on your rowing to get you in. That's completely irrelevant, unfortunately. You've got to you've got to nail your academics, keep the rowing going on the side, crush both. But uh, that that's how you get in, unfortunately. They they can't recruit otherwise. Anything else you would like to say, at Lance? Um, FTT. I would definitely, yeah, <laughs> F FTT. You know, over Versus. everything. Uh, no, I'm joking. You know, we got some. No, well, yeah, we have some You need a friends. Cambridge person in advance of that. Yeah, we need a Cambridge right. person, yeah. Well, uh, I think the race is obviously like a huge um, kind of event in the rowing calendar. And, you know, if you have an opportunity to do it, I would definitely, it's definitely worth applying to 
well, obviously Oxford, but you know, Oxford, Oxbridge as well as, you know, any opportunity is incredible. Um, so yeah, you know, put an application if you want to go to uh, post-grad. But well, yeah, what I'd, I'd add is, uh, I don't think I'm being harsh and vast for myself when I say that we're perhaps never going to be sort of top flight athletes, uh, you know, full time at Caversham, but there's still a very big event out there, which is the boat race that, you know, if you're willing to work hard and you, you get into Oxford or Cambridge, you, you can be there with some incredible athletes and in, in in a really great program and, and perform on what is a real, real privilege uh, stage to, uh, in front of millions of people and that that's an incredible feeling um, even if the sort of quality of rowing isn't you know olympic standard no absolutely um yeah all right thank you very much guys so a bit different on eric thoughts today more of like an interview style of things <laughs> rather than me just shouting at the microphone thank you very much lance no thank worries. you for having us thank and you. we'll see you after we're finished this workout yam it baby <laughs> Yam it! <laughs> and we've made it back into the crew room. Got a delicious lunch today provided by Leander Club. Whoa! What is it? What is it? Curry? What is it, guys? What we got? Thai curry. Green Thai green curry. 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 Absolutely yeah. excellent. Salad. 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 There's a lot of things. <laughs> Gonna eat this because remember. Food is fuel. Food is fuel. Food is gruel. What do you think of lunch today, Ben? It looks really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna eat this and see what's on in a minute. And it is time for a tour round Henley Royal Regatta. It's still getting all put up, so I think just walk around, we'll see what's going on. Yeah, let's just see what's happening with everyone getting put up. Key going up, bar goes in there, so that you can have lunch, you can have dinner. But here we go into the sort of the boat tents area coming up. So right here is where the guards start showing up. So you can't get in here without either a competitor's badge, a steward's badge, or something like that. But you need a badge to get through this section here, right here. And you can't get in without a badge. And here are the boat tents. Right now, there's no boats in the boat tents themselves, but soon enough, the boats will start arriving and these tents will be filled with activity. And the aim is to show you guys when these are full, maybe the weddings day, to show you the boat tents full. So have a look at just the empty racks and how much space there is for all of these boats. That's a lot of, lot of space. So what usually happens is on the weddings day, these racks are pretty much all full. And then as the days progress, as boats get knocked out, unfortunately, the boats become emptier and emptier. And by the Sunday, you should have all the crews that are, or you're gonna have the winning crews for each event and a few more. So not many boats left. So maybe probably less than half the racks will be filled on the Sunday, now you've got these right here, you've got racks for the oars. And then let's walk to the, the media area, go to the shop to see if there's anything open. Last year I was able to talk to some people and get access to different areas. We'll see if that happens this year, hopefully it does. And of course you've got all the lovely houses, we've got Andy Trotman's house over there. He let some of the Leander athletes go there to relax at Henley time. That's the house over there, over here. But that's an awesome house to be at as well. Let me just have a little walk around. So the back of the tents here have the changing areas for the men and women. That is the cold shower area. Oh, it's absolutely freezing, but gotta shower up. And as we walk past more boat tents, P, Q, R, we go to so this is the officials area for the Henley Royal Regatta. You've got 
So you've got the weigh-in area, got like official results area, right here the the titles and labels aren't up yet. So weigh-in area, one of these, official times over here, and then you've got the regatta shop goes here, and then in this area, the area in front of the shop is an area for, where can I go? In front of the shop is some, so the Concept 2 guys wait there, and then up here the media people go for the announcements and whatnot. wonder if we can get up there, seems to be a bit of a gate, but no one's around, let's see about it, yeah why not? Yeah. All right. So up here is the media area, better view of the Henley Royal Regatta. Let's have a look over there. So you can just see the finish line right here, right there, and then you've got a media tower, and down there is the stewards enclosure, and this is the. Henley Royal Regatta media area still getting sorted out and this is usually where so BBC Sport will do a part of their show as well on this balcony right here across there but I think that will be part one of the tour of Henley Royal Regatta as we are still getting a lot of work done here it's a very exciting time all of this stuff's been done really quickly sort of starts a few weeks ago you get put up, you get a couple of booms in, you get the booms in quite early, and then all of a sudden the marquee's up, that marquee at Leander took a, a day, maybe a day and a half to put up. All the covers get put on the tents really quickly and, by, and in a couple of weeks time, the boats will start arriving for Henley Royal Regatta. So hopefully I'll give you guys some sweet access to what it's like to participate in Henley Royal Regatta. Hopefully I'll see you guys here as well the people that are participating themselves let me know in the comments below if there is anything specifically that you would like to see that I may be able to get access to but we'll see obviously I'll be racing so I can't do too much but it'd be pretty cool to show you guys the in and sides and outsides of the Henley Royal Regatta and obviously I'm going to talk to the guys at Leander Club to perhaps do a little tour of the club for you guys as well but we'll see about that and I think that'll be the end of the vlog for today. I've got lower body weights coming up. Lower body weights coming up. And then... That is it for the rest of the day. So that is it for the vlog for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope, hope, blah, excuse me. Hope you enjoyed the chat from Will and Vass. Hopefully enjoyed a little tour there as well. A little bit different. A little bit different sort of vlog for today. And the different angles. So a lot of different things happening today on today's vlog. Again, hopefully you enjoyed it, but remember, subscribe if you haven't already, hit that like button, have a good one.